Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, the Computer Certification Bulldog here, and in today's video practice exam and lab for you NA and NP candidates alike, I've got some questions here for you on static routing. Now before we dive into the questions, and of course I'll show you the answers in action on live Cisco equipment, I want to mention that I do have some longer videos on YouTube dealing with both static routing and floating stat static routes. And I also have those posted on my website as well. In the description of this video on YouTube, I'll put some bit.ly links back to those. And when you've got a little more time, uh, make sure to watch them because there's about 30 to 45 minutes there total free video training that I know will really come in handy for you on your NA and NP exam. Let's jump into the first question here. And which of these are legitimate entries for the end of a static route? Because this is a situation where the router might not let you do something, but the exam might say on a multiple choice question like this one. So can we put the remote IP, the local IP, the remote interface name, or the local interface name at the end of a static route command? And as always, my questions are the dreaded select all that apply. No multiple choice here, but once the minimum administrative distance that you can put on a floating static route that will float and only be used in case the matching rip route is lost. And again, if floating static routing is new to you or you're a little fuzzy on it, make sure to check out that link that I mentioned in this YouTube video description or just search for them in Google or YouTube because I've got plenty of help for you on that in a live lab. Which of these indicates a default static route? An asterisk, the letter S, the letter D, or the letter G? A lot of codes you got to learn when you're just getting started with this stuff. And then after creating a default static route, you ping the destination that you specified and you get a mix of timeouts and unreachables for the ping result. What's the likely issue here? That the packet isn't leaving the local router? That the downstream router has no path to the destination? That IP is not correctly installed? Or is this a scenario that can't happen because pings can only return one character? You know, we get those five results, but can we actually get a mix? We're going to see that on live Cisco routers here in just a moment. And we're definitely going to see the answer to this one right now. Which of these are legitimate entries for the end of a static route? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put a default static route in. Let's go ahead and bring the pot up. And just to show you here, we're on router three. And nothing up my sleeve here, no hidden commands, just got a real basic frame relay config here. And let's go ahead and use our command. And first off, of course, we have to know what command we're using, right? And that is what? The IP route command. And for a default static route, what we're going to do is put all zeros for the destination prefix and the prefix mask. And I know if you're relatively new to this, that looks really funny. You know, and you just have to kind of get over that, or you really got to get over it, because you can't look at it and say, well, that looks funny, because believe me, you're going to see a lot of funny looking commands before it's over. Now, what we can put here after this, and this goes for any static route, if we were making a host static route where we're reaching only one destination, the two choices we have at the end of the IP route command, the forwarding router's address or the local interface type. So going back to the question, we could put the remote IP address or the local interface name. Very important distinction there. Now, what I meant when I said that sometimes the router won't let you do something, but the test would, uh, on a multiple choice question, obviously, we could pick the wrong one, but we're not going to do that because we know the answer to this one. But I want to show you what happens if you try to put the local IP address in at the end of the IP route command. The router is actually going to tell you, hey, invalid next top address. And I love the way it kind of whispers to you, you know, hey, it's this router. So you can't put your local IP address. What we can do, I've got a downstream router at 172.12.123.1, and that's what I'm going to use here. And that's it. So that answers the first question. Let's tackle that second question. And what is the minimum admin distance of a floating static route when RIP is involved? It's 121. 
because the RIP administrative distance, as we know, is 120. So if we want to make a static route that's actually going to float, that's 121. And actually, that's the protocol I use in those other videos I mentioned. So check those out when you get a chance. Now, which of these indicates a default static route? Well, we just created one. So let's go back to the live equipment and run a show IP route. And you'll notice that we have two symbols here. Not really a trick question, but I did say choose all that apply. Now, the letter S is for static. Easy enough to remember. It's one of the first codes you learn. But you've got to remember what the default static route, like the one we created, it's got that asterisk as well because it's going to be marked as a candidate default. So this is a default static route. We're going to have two symbols on it. Now, after we create a default static route, like we just did, there was a coincidence, you ping the destination and you get timeouts and unreachables. And let's see if that's what we get right now. And let's go ahead, I'm going to ping a, a downstream loopback that's behind router one, so to speak. And you can see that we can indeed get a mix of ping returns. And especially the first time you see this, because it did for me a long time ago, just panics you. It's like, oh man, what in the world's going on here? Well, let's run debug IP packet real quick and send that ping again. Let's try pinging 2222. I want to show you what the output of these looks like when it work when you when you're able to ping and when you're not. Well, here you can see that the packets are going out. You know, we're seeing sending but we're not getting back what we want. So let's try pinging something I know we can ping, and that's 172.123.1. And this is what it's going to look like when you can ping. Sending and receiving, real clean, etc. So let's do a quick you all there. We know now that we can indeed get multiple characters back from a ping, and this is all bad three unreachables and two timeouts, and it could be the other way around. We could get three timeouts and two periods if we kept sending pings. The problem in that situation is that the downstream router does not have a path to the destination. And this is the kind of thing where you can rule it out. You know, if you don't know exactly what the answer is on an exam, one thing that I've always done, certification exam or not, if I didn't immediately know the answer, I would eliminate the wrong answers. Well, I know that the, the packet is leaving the local router, or I wouldn't be getting those unreachables from a downstream router. It's not that IP isn't correctly installed. And I know now, if I didn't know before, that pings can't return a mix of characters. So really, if you eliminate the incorrect answers, this is the only one we're really left with. But I wanted to show you this, and again, that's in my other longer videos as well, that when you get this really odd ping combination, u.u.u.u, that just simply means that the downstream router, or a downstream router, does not have a path to that particular destination. So that is it for today's video practice exam. I look forward to seeing you online, on Twitter, on Facebook as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, the Computer Certification Bulldog.